start? Yeah. yeah. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us at the Keys History and Discovery Center for our virtual visit today. I'm Erin Muir, and I have been the person for the past several weeks behind the camera, but Blake Terry, our moat biologist, is not able to be here with us today, so I'm filling in for him with my daughter, Violet. Can you say hi to everyone, Violet? So we've had several folks ask us in previous segments about the different species that we have here. So I thought that Violet and I would take you on a little scavenger hunt so we can give you the scope of all of the different fish and crustaceans we have. So the first thing, Violet's already found the first one. She has found our puffer fish. What's another, and another name for a puffer fish is a balloon fish. Yes, because he does that. Can you show everybody what a balloon fish does when he gets scared? Make your balloon fish face. Great job. So we have one balloon fish. We also have a Florida spiny lobster, and we call him Larry. Now he's hiding right now, and he's using his camouflage. Can you find him, Violet? Yes, he is. He's camouflaged back up there. Why? On the rocks. Why? That's a great question. Maybe he's taking a rest. And when crustaceans are out there in the ocean and they are wanting to hide from things that might eat them, predators, they use their camouflage so that they blend into their surroundings and they make it harder for predators to find them. So we found our spiny lobster, Larry, and we found our balloon fish. Let's see if we can find our French angelfish. This is a really Big fish right there. Correct, Violet. Great job. That is our French angel fish. The nice exactly. black and yellow. That one is. Okay, so now let's see if we can find our hi hat, Violet. This guy has stripes and a tall fin on top that looks like he's wearing a hat. Kind of stripes like a zebra. Do you see any fish that has stripes like a zebra and a tall fin? Yes, right there. That's a zebra fishy. It is a zebra fishy? Yeah. Well, he's actually called a high hat because yeah. of that funny little fin on the top that looks like he's wearing a top hat. So now let's find our Atlantic blue tang. There are three of them in there. You are right. That is the blue tang. Did you know that? There's two. There's two. There's actually three. There's another one in here somewhere, a littler one. I think right down there. Yeah, it's so cute. Did you know that these blue tang? There's a new one. There's another one. So they're called Atlantic blue tang. Why do you think they're called Atlantic? Where do you think they live? Coral reef. Coral reef, but which ocean? Like in the sea. But if it's the Atlantic blue tang, which ocean do you think they live in? Uh, Atlantic Ocean. You're right, the Atlantic Ocean. They live in the Atlantic Ocean. Now there are other blue tangs. They're called Pacific blue tangs, and they live in the Pacific Ocean. And that's what Dory is in Finding Nemo. Yeah, where's Finding Nemo? Where's well, we don't have any because these are fish that live in the Atlantic Ocean, and the Finding Nemo fish live in the Pacific Ocean. So let's see now if we can find the doctor fish. He's light gray in color. Do you see a fish that's light gray? Yes, that's our doctor fish. Good job. I think it's a doctor fish. Why is it a doctor fish? You know what? I have no idea why they're called a doctor fish, but that's a great question. Maybe when Mr. Blake gets back, he's a marine biologist, maybe he can tell us. So we found the doctor fish. Now we need to find the little Spanish hogfish, and there are two of them and they are purple on top and yellow on the bottom. Do you see any little fish that are purple and yellow? We may have to look that way a little bit. Oh, he's, he's nibbling on our little coral rock there. Keep looking a little further down. I think I see him right over there. Wait, there? Yes. That's the one. Mm-hmm. 
Now this is a cool fish right here with the black vertical stripes, which go up and down, mm -hmm. and the yellow horizontal stripes. See this big guy over there? Yeah. That is our pork fish. Why does pork? Well, I think that's different pork than you eat. Why the pork fish? I never seen one before. You've never seen one before? Now, let's see if we can find a fish that looks like he's wearing a little raccoon, black raccoon mask over his eyes. Do you see one with a mask over his eyes? A black stripe over his eyes going down that way? Ooh, that's the one we're looking for. That's the reef butterfly. This one? No, nope, that's our angelfish. Look at this guy with the little just raccoon mask right there. He's coming back to see you. That one's called a reef butterfly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a funny fish. And let's see, did we get them all? Do you see any fish that we haven't talked about yet, Violet? And then talk about, and then talk about that one right there. That's the doctor fish. Oh, which one we didn't talk about yet? Well, we didn't talk about the pudding wife wrasse, but what? Mr. Blake hey. said that that one likes to hide a lot, and I'm not seeing him coming out to see us right now. So we're going to have to skip talking about him. Hey, 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 we did talk about Sam Manny. Oh, maybe that's him. Maybe you spotted him. Good job. Is him is it? Okay, so Violet and I did a project inspired by the oh. coral reef that we'd like to share with you. Now let's do it again. We're gonna pull it in over here. So we started this project. Can you bring the project over here, Violet? We started this project the week after Violet's school closed, and it started with an idea yeah. from the Save a Turtle organization of the Florida Keys. They posted on their social media a project to make sea turtles out of a paper plate. So that's what we started with. Can you show them your sea turtle, Violet? Okay. Show them in there. Which one is your sea turtle that you made? Yes, that's beautiful. And it's actually turtle nesting season right now. And if you follow Save a Turtle of the Florida Keys on social media, you can see their work. I'll do now. Hold on. In walking the beaches and looking for nests and tracking nests um, and protecting those. So we made our turtles and then Violet asked where they lived. And well, we said they live in the ocean, right? And then she said, where's their ocean? So we decided to make them an ocean, and we took an Amazon box, because we have lots of those I'll these days, now. and we painted them blue, painted the inside blue. Yeah. And then we needed some sea creatures to join them. Now, full disclosure, I just Googled sea creature cutout. I want to say, I want to say it now. You want to say what? Something. Okay. Together. 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 Okay, well, we're talking about your sea creatures. Together. So, uh, I have no idea if these all are Atlantic or Pacific, but school was closed and we needed a fun, quick project. So we went with what Google uh, popped up for us, and I'm happy to uh, put in the link after we're done, uh, put the link for the sea turtle and the sea creature cutouts in the comments section of this post. So. Violet and I, when we were doing our watercolors of our corals and things, we thought about our exhibit here and used it as our inspiration. And we would love for all the kids out there to create their own piece of art inspired by our, by our exhibit here. And if, you're, if you have your parents, snap a picture of it and either post it or post it on this post or email it to us at info at keysdiscovery.com. We would love to see your art inspired by the, Flor the Florida coral reefs. And if you send that in to us, we will send your family a pass to the museum so that you can come visit us at the museum this summer. And those passes will be for the summer and good through August and uh, will be 
allow you and your family to come visit us for free. Uh -huh. So I think that's all we have for you today. Violet, thank you so much for being my helper. You did a great job, high five. You did a great job identifying all those fish and we didn't even practice in advance. She just loves this exhibit and loves looking at it every time she comes to visit. So thanks so much for tuning in. Violet, can you say goodbye to everyone? Say bye. We will see you back here tomorrow with our curator, Brad Bertelli, at 10 a.m. for another virtual visit. Uh, Wednesday night, we have our Cocktails with the Curator program. You can learn more about that program at keysdiscovery.com slash virtual programs, keysdiscovery.com backslash virtual programs. This and time you over, start over. <laughs> we're all we're almost done okay and so we hope you'll join us for the rest of the programs we have lined up this week uh, wrapping up with our field trip on Friday so we've got a busy week ahead and I would like to remind everyone that as a not-for-profit organization we are dependent upon the generosity of our donors to be able to continue to to do all of this programming and operate this facility so there's a donate link on this uh, Facebook video, and if you are able and would like to, uh, we would greatly appreciate your support. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us.